A big thank you once again to our guests in our first segment talking about those war era stories for the state of Ohio right now changing focus shifting it back here to Toledo and talking about Toledo police recruitment and the efforts that are underway right now to boost those numbers here in the city of Toledo. Glad to have Deputy Chief Diana Ruiz Kraus with us. Also Mayor Mike Bell and Deputy Mayor Shirley Green, all of them joining us here at the roundtable. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Let's kind of, I guess, put the finger on where things are as far as the police force is concerned. Every we do stories again and again about the economy, where hiring is, and, and it, it falls in that same line with the police department. There have been shortages as far as the number of officers, but we're getting it back up, aren't we? Oh, we're thrilled to get those numbers back up. We have, for the past few years, our numbers have been low. We've had a large number of retirements, which has really negatively impacted our department. So we are thrilled to now be hiring uh, for the police department. We will hire a class coming up in September. We'll have a class of 40 officers, so we're thrilled about that. And in addition to that, we want to go above and beyond that. So that's why we are recruiting now to be able to hire for next year. And we just brought in a class in May of 39, that adding to the, the numbers as well. Uh, Mayor, as, as we look at where the department is, obviously we here have covered the contract talks, we have covered the retirements, which you say were out of, the, out of anybody's control, but perception is reality. And, and for the people of Toledo to hear that hiring is going on at the police department, how important is that? Well, it's a high priority for the administration, uh, but what we had to do is uh, we had to be able to get that budget under control. Mm -hmm. Remember when we came in, we had a large deficit and we had to be able to work through a lot of issues. I'm happy to report today that we're in much better shape than we were uh, uh, a couple years back, and that's allowing for us to be able to do what the people have actually told us to do. They want to be safe, but they've also given me another command, and they don't want their taxes raised. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is be able to balance both of those concerns and be able to make our city safe while still being able to meet their concerns about, about not raising their taxes, and I think we're meeting that goal. And Deputy Mayor Shirley Green, whether, whether it's just the people we are talking to who mm -hmm. are telling us they have fears in the community as far as crime is concerned and where things sit in the city of Toledo, and you put more officers out there, does that basically start sending out the, I guess, the feeling among Toledoans that, okay, more officers, more safety? It helps our, our citizens understand that their safety is a top priority for this administration. We have hired over 79 officers in the last couple of years, and like the Deputy Chief Diane Reese Krause said earlier, that we are continuing to do so. Mm -hmm. So that is very important for them to see increased pl uh, police presence on the street. A poignant moment, and I got to bring it up because I, I made sure that we, we used it earlier this week in not only one of our newscasts, but a couple of our newscasts. You were standing around uh, a group of children at the mm -hmm. Moody Manor Apartments, and you looked at those kids after that shooting that happened there, and you said, we are doing everything we can to make sure this is a safe place. Absolutely, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, I want those young kids to be able to sleep at night. And the only way we can do that is we gotta make sure that our police department is appropriately staffed and we need to be more aggressive, but we also need the community to be able to step up too and be able to help because those kids are our future. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at their little eyes and, and, and they wanna know that they can go to bed at night and not worry about being shot. Yeah. And we gotta and we gotta do everything we can as a as a city to make sure that that occurs. And and, and almost immediately there were some arrests made in that case. Uh, we at this time that we're taping on Thursday still haven't linked the suspects directly to the shooting, but they are being held on bond. Uh, Deputy Chief, as we as we go forward and we look at the way this this department is growing back to the numbers that we once had just a few years ago. What does that say to you? And what is the, I guess, the, the mood right now as far as the department is concerned? I think the mood on the department is we're looking up. We are thrilled to get those numbers up to help our officers do the things they need to do. We are looking for good people who will help us to patrol the streets, to protect the community. So we are really happy about adding numbers to our department. Is it relatively a younger department right now? No, and that's what part of uh, the problem is that we have had so many retirements. We have uh, some larger classes coming up that are going to be due to retire. Mm -hmm. So we really need to boost those numbers now and look to the future so we're ready when those larger classes retire. So now we're starting to get some of those younger officers on the department. And when you look at the building, I guess, a police force, how important is it to have a mixture 
of some of those veterans out there and also some of the youth coming in? Absolutely, because some of the older officers, more seasoned, are have a lot of uh, experience and are maybe a little more, a little calmer. You've got those younger officers that are out there ready to make arrests, that are all excited, um, very assertive. So that combination works very well. Yeah. Right. Our police department is transitioning from a, a relatively old police department to a, to a younger police department. You're, we're going from a 21st century model mm -hmm. to a 21st century model. Chief Diggs has taken us into the 21st century with his concept of data-driven policing. Mm -hmm. And what we really need that mixture of old and new because that will help us push forward and combine those two uh, types of philosophies to really have a wonderful police department. And if you step if you step out of the mayor's job for just a second, take off that hat, and having been in the safety forces here in the city of Toledo from a state standpoint, your read on where things are right now. I mean, when you look at the safety forces here in Toledo, are you happy? It's, you know, you're not, I'm not totally satisfied because we have to be able to get those numbers back. Yeah. And it's really actually nobody's fault. Uh, but it takes time to get back and people get a little impatient and I understand that. Uh, but it, it is starting to grow where it's supposed to be. We're balancing off where our fire numbers should be. We're balancing off where our police numbers should be. We're aggressively approaching it. We're using it, the finances to be able to meet the needs that people are asked us to do. Yeah. So I think we're getting there. The other part, you brought up the veterans. We actually have part of a grant that we're now receiving that will actually help us bring on veterans, okay, mm -hmm. and bring them into our police department. So I think that we're starting to connect on a lot of different uh, levels and being able to take care of the safety issue. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can as a city, but that does not relieve the community itself also of understanding that they have to be part of that solution. I appreciate they, they have to be. They have to be right there with us. I appreciate our time is short. We had some good stories at the first part of the show. We're going to wrap things up right after this.